Hello everyone. It is Saturday before the third week of Advent. Is it going fast? Is it dragging? How's it going for you? It's going okay for me. I think it's going normal speed. I'm learning a lot. I'm trying to take every day as it comes. Yet today I want to talk about tomorrow because I think it's always a good idea to prepare for the Sunday <laughs> worship, especially if that's the only opportunity that you have to receive Jesus in the Eucharist and to spend that time with him, which I know you probably have other time that you can spend with him in adoration or in front of him in the church, the tabernacle, right by the altar. But I digress. So tomorrow, we're supposed to be joyful. It's the pink candle of the Advent wreath. And I want us to have incredible joy even when we don't necessarily feel it. And how in the world do you do that? It's all around being grateful. Looking at all of the amazing blessings that God has in your life already. Maybe even going back and thinking about the times that you thought you were in the worst stage of your life, but how much love and learning came out of it. I don't know. Sometimes we don't do enough reflecting. We don't do enough reflecting on the day that we just lived, let alone the walk that we've been on. So maybe that's what you need to do is say, you know what, Lord, thank you. My goodness, thank you for all of the beautiful blessings in my life for the family that you put me in, even though not always perfect. I am who I am because of where I grew up and whose life you put me in. And we have to be grateful for the bad, the mediocre, and the great, and the awesome, all of it. And if you really do sit down and go through the, the litany of gratitude, everyone's like, can you send me that prayer? <laughs> I'm like, no, it's your prayer. It's your prayer to God. You thank him for all the things that are on your heart. You know, that's what the real relationship with Jesus is all about. Not about a written prayer that you read, but, but from speaking from your heart. All righty, let's talk about mortifications. Okay, so wait, before we get off of the joy, let's make sure that we prepare for joy, that we plan to be joyful that we plan to love those in our lives, right? You remember joy, Jesus, others, then you. So let's prepare for tomorrow. Let's read the readings. Let's sit with it for a little bit. Let's get there early. Let's stay 15 minutes late and just thank Jesus. Thank him for being inside you in the Eucharist, if you are receiving him, and if you're not ready, and if your soul isn't worthy, meaning you've got a mortal sin on your soul, then do not receive him or get to confession today. I'm sure there's some that are available before you receive him on the vigil mass, which is usually Saturday evenings or Sunday. But this is a week of joy, so let's really celebrate it. Be excited. Turn on some Christmas music. Keep your lights on during the day. We're not going to see sun where I live until probably sometime next week. Ugh. So I've got the Christmas lights on in the house. We've talked about this before. Father Mike Schmidt said, if things like decorating or listening to Christmas music or baking or celebrating in other ways help you get closer to Jesus is coming and Mary and the whole season of Jesus and Christmas and his second coming, then do it. Don't go overboard. Don't bake every day so that when Christmas comes, there's nothing special. That's the difference. But my goodness, spend some time being joyful. Watch Christmas movies. Watch some religious movies. Watch The Chosen Part one and two, I think, are out there for free on YouTube. Just do something joyful that you thoroughly enjoy that brings you again closer to God and helps you in the vocation, the state of life that you're in. So let's get to my mortifications. Oh my goodness, you guys should have been a fly on the wall with me last night in my kitchen. 
I don't know what happened. I did my workout, made meatloaf. Remember I mentioned meatloaf and then had to peel all the carrots and potatoes and I, I ate a, a good normal size dinner. I was not hungry at all, but the ice cream was still in the house. <laughs> And it was a non-real thinking moment. I just went in there and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna have one little bowl. I mean, it's like the size, gosh, my hand looks huge. <laughs> it was about the size of my hand. And I put some chocolate sauce on it and a couple of walnuts. And then I, there was like another serving left. And right before we went to bed, my husband's like, are you ready to go up? And I'm like, ah, I think I'm going to finish the rest of that. Because I kept trying to dish it off on him. Like, hey, honey, there's still a, like a little bowl here. Do you want it? And he's like, no, no, no. So right before we went to bed, I ate it. I'm such a loser. And I ate it right out of the carton. Didn't put it in a container. I didn't have any topping on it. And it wasn't even that good. That's the thing that kills me. If it was good, I would have been like rock on, worth every bite. Wasn't even that good. And to, to do it right before bed. Blah. Uh, so what were my mortifications today, which I believe I've already done them and then some. So today I've worked out. Today I also had to clean this office, which I'm in right now. My husband was looking for a manual. I just tore this whole place apart, but it was good because I cleaned up so much and I was able to get stuff that was on the floor into the closet. And that was not on my list, but I call it a mortification because I did not get to my organizing, you know, my spice racks and things like that the other day. So I, I, I got the office out of the way. It was the hardest one. I didn't even plan on doing it. So that was a God thing, if anything. I have fasted and I'm going to be able to fast up until five. It's about 2.30, 3 o'clock right now. And just doing this video, <laughs> like, don't get me wrong. I love you all, I do. But to do these videos and then to edit them and then to upload them and everything, it's, it's a little time consuming, but I like to come and share because that's the whole point. We're all supposed to walk together. And honestly, today, which is why I wanted to talk about joy. Joy isn't something that we, we can't have, especially if we know where to put it. Joy in the fact that we have faith, joy in the fact that Jesus is our salvation, joy that this world is fleeting, joy that we can have detachment from this culture because Jesus tells us that's what we should do, joy and persecution from others and the labels because that's what Jesus says is a good thing. Joy, 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 joy. It can be yours now, even if it's like yucky weather, if everything else around you and the circumstances aren't quite joyful or joyous, just call on God and say thank you. Trust me. So yeah, I mean, I didn't really want to do this because I was kind of lazy and I'm hoping to get a nap and I don't know if I'll get a nap. I might just go downstairs and be with my husband and do something good for my vocation and be present. That's what I'm thinking. I'm going to shut this thing off, edit this video, get it uploaded to YouTube and call it a night. And also, honestly, I'm going to do my preparation for Sunday, but I don't consider that a mortification. I think that that's something we should always do, but I don't always do it. So yeah, I'll call that a step toward my soul. Remember, mind, body, soul. So what have you done for yourself lately? You know that song? Janet Jackson, I think it was, what have you done for me lately? You should be asking yourself that. And also, God's asking you that too. Okay, everyone, I love you all. Have an awesome, joy-filled day. Every day should be filled with joy. Joy is the best net to catch fish too, by the way. All righty, I love you all. Find something more with God. Have a blessed and inspired day. Preferred.